All righty. So today, going to be our last kind of application section for a while. Then the last three or four weeks of class will just be applications. But we're going to look at motion and velocity with air resistance. So before we get to air resistance, let's remind ourselves what happens if we don't have air resistance. One of Newton's laws says that if an object is moving, um, its mass times its acceleration equals F force. We could rewrite that because we know that acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. And if we have an object that's falling and we're neglecting air resistance, the only force that this object is going to experience is gravitational. And the gravitational force depends on the constant of gravitation G, and it depends on the mass of the force M. Well, the M on the left and the M on the right cancel. The derivative of the velocity with respect to time, that's an equal sign. It looks like a greater than, let me fix it, equals negative g. And now this can be solved using acceleration. I'm sorry, using integration. This is something we do in calculus two, maybe even the end of calculus one. The velocity is the integral of the constant negative g. So it's negative gt plus v zero. Um, this v zero, I mean, we're integrating, so we get a constant of integration. If we let time be a zero, then the velocity at time zero is zero plus c. So the constant of integration is the velocity at time zero, what we call v zero. And then if we integrate again, the height of the object, often called s, I'm calling it y, is negative g over 2 t squared plus v0 t plus y0, the initial height. So if you neglect air resistance, again, the only force is gravitational. And this is a calculus problem. It can be solved entirely via integration. Let's do a full decimal sub. We want to look at some graphs. So let's do a 
a calculus problem as an example. Let's say a crossbow is fired straight up from ground level with a velocity of forty nine meters per second. Then according to what we have here, um G is one of those famous constants that you might just end up memorizing. It shows up in so many math examples. The gravitational constant is 9.8. So V is negative 9.8 T plus the initial velocity of 49, then the height is negative 4.9 T squared plus 49 T plus zero. It's fired off from ground level. So when we graph these, we're not going to see anything real exciting. We're going to see a straight line, the velocity. And we are going to see a parabola the height. And velocity, here's our graph. Um, this velocity is initially positive while the crossbow bolt goes up and then it becomes negative as the crossbow bolt starts to fall down. So if we look at the velocity and the height together, and I'm going to have to, let's see, we don't need to look at a bunch of negative x values. Okay, we're actually going to have to look There we go. So we can see both the um, height function and the velocity function. And as I said, and this is now really helped to this, you see that this object, this crossbow bolt achieves its maximum height at the same moment that its velocity becomes negative and then it falls down. And because this is from a textbook, it's designed for everything to work out nicely, and it hits the ground after 10 seconds. So that's probably not super accurate. Um, crossbow bolts are relatively fast. I mean, they're not fast, fast. They're not speeding bullets or rockets, but they're moved, the faster an object moves, the worse it probably is to ignore air resistance, because the more velocity there is, the more air resistance there is. So this is what we get from ignoring air resistance, but it's not clear how 
wise a decision ignoring air resistance is. Our goal for the day will be to repeat this example with the crossbow bolt, but no longer ignoring air resistance. And we'll have a few tertiary goals along the way. So M, the mass, times dv dt, the acceleration, equals the force. Without air resistance, the only force is gravitational. Let's put air resistance in. Force is additive. So to put air resistance in, we just add it in. And air resistance is a complicated phenomenon. It's going to depend on all sorts of things, like the shape of the object and the speed of the object. We often assume that force due to air resistance is some constant times the velocity raised to some other constant. And for lower speeds, we often just assume that P is one. Um, so lower speeds can include a crossbow bolt. As I say, I mean, it's fast by our standards, but it's not fast compared to a bullet or a rocket or something that's really moving fast. So we'll analyze M dv dt equals the force due to gravity, negative gm, minus kV, the force due to um, air resistance. And we have a negative sign here because the force due to air resistance always opposes motion. When the object is going up, the force due to air resistance is pushing it down. When the object is falling, the force due to air resistance is pushing it up. So that negative sign causes air resistance to oppose motion. And now we can divide both sides by M. K divided by M will give its own name. We'll call it rho. So dV dt equals negative g minus rho times v. All of these constants are positive. Question? Oh, what? what is that uh, after the g? Is that a p or? Um, it's the Greek letter rho. Oh, but right. if you want to write p, that's... Uh, I thought it was it's, it's like, different from this. That's, if what, that's the confusion. I thought that was coming back. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me see. All of these constants are positive. Again, in differential equations, you normally insist that your positives are constant, or you normally assume that your constants are positive. 
And if you want something to be negative, you make it negative by putting in minus symbols in front of the positive constants. So before we do anything else, our goal is ultimately to solve this. But we could also look at the fixed points of this thing. This is an autonomous differential equation. Let's try to understand the motion of a falling object using fixed points. We'll set the derivative equal to zero. And we find that there is a fixed point. The fixed point is negative. G is positive, rho is positive. So negative G over rho is negative. And now let's look at this derivative. We can figure out when this derivative's positive and when this derivative is negative. If this is the V axis, then the derivative dV dt is a straight line. Negative g minus rho v is linear. It's got a negative slope. So it looks like this. And the derivative is positive on the left, negative on the right. So this fixed point is asymptotically stable and velocities approach this fixed point. And this is a phrase we've probably heard before. This fixed point is terminal velocity. If an object is allowed to just keep falling, it does not accelerate until it's super fast. That's, that's a lie we tell children, right? When we're first uh, teaching them about acceleration, we say, or at least we said in my school, that if you dropped a penny off the Empire State Building, it would accelerate and it would be able to crack the concrete. Well, that's not actually true because of this picture. A penny dropped off the Empire State Building will not accelerate until it hits the ground. It will reach terminal velocity, and that terminal velocity is not enough to be dangerous. It would not crack concrete. It would not kill somebody if it hit them. Let's move through the explicit solution kind of fast because it's not super exciting. Well, I shouldn't I shouldn't bias you. But we've got dv dt equals negative g minus rho v. We 
we could separate this all in one swoop, but it's more typical to divide both sides by negative rho. And that gives us V plus G over rho. And now we'll divide both sides by the right. We get negative one over rho times one over V plus G over rho for separating variables here. This D of E stays put. We've got in fact, let me write this. We divide both sides by the right. It turns into one. Now we'll separate variables. We'll multiply both sides by d t. And we will integrate. So when we integrate the left, it's a tiny u substitution, but I mean, you could let u be a v plus g over rho du ends up being d v. And when you integrate, you get um, negative one over rho, the constant stays put, times the natural log of V zero plus G over rho. Maybe I shouldn't. I always sort of want to go through this quickly, but I have to remember that it's been a while since you've done this. So here's the integral we want to take. We're doing U substitution. Um, because du just equals one d of e, the u substitution is is super nice. One over u d u, the natural log of u, the natural log of v plus g over r. So, sorry if I lost anyone there. Um, we don't have absolute values because this is positive. Um, I know that it's positive. Why? I know that it's positive because um, V is zero. Right, right, here. I know that it's positive because it equals this. And one over rho is positive, and dv dt is negative. We're thinking of a falling object, and a negative sign cancels out the negative sign, and that makes everything positive. So no need for absolute values. And now we're going to do some simplification. We will, um, sorry, I, as sometimes happens, my pen just keeps writing, even when it shouldn't. That's a V in parentheses. 
We're going to do some simplification. We can multiply both sides by negative rho. We can exponentiate both sides. An exponential of addition or subtraction can be written as the product of exponentials. We do that here. And our goal was to find the velocity function And at this point, it might seem like we've achieved that goal. And in one sense we have, but there's an issue here. And that issue is that there are um, two unknowns. Um, it probably seems like there are more than that, but going through these, G is the gravitational constant. We know what G is. Near the surface of the Earth, it's about 9.8. If we were far from the Earth or on another planet, we need a different value, but we can look it up. G is no problem. Rho is one of those other things that we can just look up. Like we've, people have spent much time studying falling bodies. You know, they have to for like parachute design. If, a, if you're a person and you're falling, people can tell you what your row will be. In this crossbow bolt example, we can figure out what row will be. Row isn't really a problem. This C is a problem. This C is just a totally arbitrary constant of integration. Like there's no way to take this crossbow bolt example. I could tell you what row will be. I couldn't tell you what C would be. So, We'd like to do better than this. We've got to velocity by itself, but it's in terms of this C. We would like to get rid of that C. And here's the trick. We're going to take that equation, and I'll copy it on the next frame. We could, we could do this with a different equation too. But I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to ask what happens when t is zero. And I'm going to say, well, when t is zero, the velocity is the initial velocity. And rather than use Function notation, I'm going to just write to V sub zero for that velocity. So negative one over rho V zero plus G over rho equals C. Because I'm letting T be zero, the T on the right vanishes, and we're just left with C. We again go through this rigmarole. We solve for V sub zero. 
And we, what am I doing? I am totally sorry, my mind seems to be elsewhere to get it together. We've got that natural logarithm. And now we'll repeat this process that we went through here. We'll multiply both sides by negative rho. We'll exponentiate both sides. And what was our goal? Well, our goal was here. We have this e to the row c, and we don't like that c. We'd like to replace it with something more concrete. Well, e to the negative row c, equals v sub zero plus g over rho. Again, g is concrete. It's the gravitational constant. Rho is concrete. It um, depends on the object, but it's measuring air resistance. v sub zero is concrete. It's the initial velocity. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to replace this thing that I've circled, this e to the negative row c. We're going to replace it with v sub zero plus g over rho. And that gives us V of T is V zero plus G over rho times E to the negative rho T minus G over rho. And there's our velocity function. By the way, this, uh, this g over rho, if you look back through your notes, we've seen this before. Minus g over rho is precisely a terminal velocity. Yeah. If we call terminal velocity v sub t, we could rewrite this v0 minus vt e to the negative rho t plus vt. Um, both those equations are the same equation. It's just that one's written in terms of G's and rows, and the other's written in terms of terminal velocity. And which of those equations is easier to use is probably going to vary from situation to situation. Any questions about the math I've done? I know I went a little fast, but I hope at least the integration I spent some time on. And then, you know, in spite of all of this messiness, we really did just use algebra. Having said that, it was messy algebra. Um, what's the height function? What's the height of this cross bolt or whatever if we do not neglect air resistance? Well, I 
again, I don't want to dwell on this. There are other things I need to talk about today. And at this point, we're not really doing differential equations. We're doing calculus. We can integrate both sides of this equation, which, I mean, saying it's not really differential equations is kind of a, a weird and judgmental way of framing it. I just mean that it's old material from other classes. We get y of t equals negative one over rho v zero minus v tau e to the negative rho t plus v sub tau t plus a constant of integration. And just as with velocity, we don't like that constant of integration. That's that t b zero. And in the place of y of zero, we'll write y sub zero. And get y sub zero equals negative one over rho times v0 minus v tau plus c. So y sub 0 plus this stuff equals c. And we can take that and we can plug it in there. And what we wind up with, and this is not obvious, let me say, we wind up with y of t equals y sub zero plus v sub tau t plus one over rho times v sub zero minus v sub tau times one minus e to the negative rho t. Woof. And what's happened here, we did this substitution, and then we factored the result. And as I say, it's not obvious. If we just look at this and look at this, it's not obvious that they're the same. But if you go through this, and I have gone through this, and you foil everything out, and you combine all of the like terms, then y as it's written up here, and y as it's written down there, really are two different ways of writing the same thing. So we've got y of t we've got v of t let's take this crossbow yeah. I didn't quite get the y of t all down. I was trying to get no the problem. Thank you. Chris, I'm good. So we've got this crossbow, 
don't disappoint, will be shot upwards. Its initial height is still going to be zero. Its initial velocity is still going to be 49 meters per second. But now we'll have air resistance. And air resistance is represented by a row, by having a row, 0 0.04. And if you take that, and you also take this known value of g, and you plug them into the previous equations, you get a velocity equation. that looks like that. And you got, you get a height equation that looks like this. Might be more normal to write that height in a semi-factored form. You see that 7350 appears twice, but it's good enough for our purposes. Again, I'm not doing anything. I mean, I'm not showing a lot of details, but that's because nothing I'm doing on this frame is, to my mind, particularly exciting. I'm taking those four values, and I'm going here, and I'm plugging those four values in. And I'm going here, and I'm plugging those four values in. What is kind of interesting, at least for me, is taking a look at these graphs. So we've got, let's see, V1 of T, we've got this velocity function. Let's try looking at this velocity, 294 e to the negative t divided by 25 minus 245. Let's hide that for a moment and let's look at this. And as you might sort of expect, velocity is decreasing, decreasing isn't quite, no, it is the right word, but um, air resistance is decreasing velocity. It's opposing motion, it's slowing the falling object down, the velocity with air resistance is always less, than the velocity without air resistance. And I know it looks like it switches, but that's a red herring. By the time these things switch, the object will have already hit the ground. So there will never be any switch around here. This velocity will always be less than this velocity.
Now let's look at the height function. There's our height function without air resistance. That's Type this in, seven, three, five, zero, one minus e to the negative t over 25, minus two, four, five, t. Something went terribly wrong with these parentheses. There, that's what I was looking for. And again, this is, I mean, what you'd, I think, intuitively expect. The air resistance is slowing the object down, so it reaches its maximum height at a lower value than without air resistance, and it reaches its maximum height sooner. And then it falls, and it hits the ground about 0.6 seconds earlier than it would if we neglected air resistance. We could do this stuff for weeks if, if it didn't, uh, if we had the wherewithal. Um, there are all sorts of variations that we could look at. So for example, negative 9.t, I'm treating that as a constant. It's not actually constant. It changes the further you get away from the surface or really the center of the Earth. So for our purposes, it's fine to treat it like a constant. But if we were at NASA and we were looking at something that was falling out of the atmosphere to the Earth's surface, it really wouldn't make sense to treat it as a constant because the difference between G close to the center of the Earth, it's different from G up in the atmosphere. Um, likewise, we treat M as a constant here. I mean, well, you'll notice that M doesn't show up in any of these equations. That's because way back here, we treated M as if it were a constant and we got rid of it. And in particular, M is treated as a constant by the fact that we could divide by M and get negative K over M is a constant row. But again, thinking of something like a spaceship launch, M is not a constant because as a spaceship launches, it jettisons its jets after they fire. So the mass of the spaceship is periodically decreasing. The spaceship is also burning fuel. So its mass is decreasing due to that. So this is something that if you really wanted to, you could, um, teach a whole course on, and if you were in the right physics or the right engineering program to be going into NASA, you would perhaps have to take that course. I think for our purposes, this is enough of a taste of this material.